The one that was in popular science was 1,000 meters long. And uh, we would have systems intermediate between that. Uh, so so uh, the first one that would be really uh, a money maker would be launching 100 pound payloads. And that's about 400 meters long. And the 100 pound yeah. payloads would be, would be satellites going in? Uh, no, I mean, they could be. I mean, I've actually done, uh, built satellite, a satellite and tested it at high G's. It worked like a charm. But I don't want to get involved in that. That would be a distraction. <clears throat> what I really th want to do is I want to supply propellant for, for a Mars mission for human exploration of deep space, deeper space than we currently do, and the moon, okay? And uh, so, yeah, we could do satellites, but I want, I'd want i prefer to launch RP, you know, locks, uh, propellants and oxidizers, fuel and oxidizers, and maybe some water. Uh, fluids are a slam dunk to launch. We could launch structural materials too, you know, uh, unistrut, aluminum, graphite, et cetera. Frozen food, tools, you name it. Uh, but I don't want it to be, this to be a distraction because really is, I'm happy as a one-trick pony if that one-trick pony can do the job. Uh, materials come and go, but I mean they always rename them and, and they try to put a lot of sizzle on the steak. They try to increase the sizzle because the steak gets cold every few years and they, they na they'll nano it a little bit, add a few nanoparticles, a little dust and increase the properties 1% and have another conference. But, I, but we have fantastic structures and have for the last 50 years. I mean, you can't beat aluminum 6061, aluminum 7075, fantastic properties. The secret weapon of the Japanese in the second war with the Zero was they used 7078 aluminum, which had 100 KSI yield strength. That was the top secret. That's why the Zeros were so light and maneuverable. Plus the pilots were small. So basically, uh, uh, that stuff's been around for eons, obviously. We use it today to make aero shafts out of. It's now it's top secret with the aero shaft guys. Works like a charm. And I like, of course, the graphites are good, and because of sporting goods and because of other reasons, uh, they've come down in price to where graphite is actually like 10, 15 a pound for the raw, to for the toes now. And so that makes it, and it's, of course, it's got 500 KSI, 700 KSI tinsel. So it's a great material to deal with. So aluminum uh, and graphite, and believe it or not, there's super high, super high strength plywoods out there, believe it or not. And uh, the, the guys who spend like lush budgets won't like that because they, they make their money, money based upon how much, how much it's gonna be. So they want expensive projects. I'm the other way. My dad built houses and raised cattle. So we always wanted to do things that guys could actually for, afford and live in, right? As opposed to just make money and have a bunch of guys working for you ostensibly. <clears throat> so the goal is to do it cheap. And uh, we, we don't care about what people, our perceived IQs. We think they're all above 90, okay, on the team. And uh, we don't care what people think of us. I have a toy company. You know, I used to be smart when I was a kid. Now I have to rely on fish oil to, for my memory. But it still works. And uh, the, the materials are there. The exotica doesn't matter. Take a big long tube and evacuate it. You have a bunch of high pressure, high temperature hydrogen at one end and a, something in the middle. And it will drive it down that barrel extraordinarily fast. And uh, I've done that you know, from experience. I was a particle theorist as a young kid, okay? And that's a, that means I lived on a blackboard until I was 30. And I got tired of nothing happening, okay? And I got by, involved by accident in experimental physics. And that was really fun to actually build something you could feel and touch and, and make something happen, right? As opposed to be with a bunch of guys with propellers and G equals eight pi team you knew and the rest mass of the up quark is this way. And, you know, it wasn't wedded to reality. And uh, so I'm happy I transitioned actually building things and the good thing about the background is, of course, I can do the math, too, if I have to. But the math for these systems is so easy, you know, I could teach a GEICO guy to do it in one hour. So math is very easy for one-dimensional gas expansion in a vacuum, just two equations, right? And all you got to know is you want a high sound speed. High sound speed. Okay. Pick hydrogen. It's got the highest sound speed. You're done. Game over. <laughs>